Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the best Dreamcast emulator on Android, Redream. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, over the years I've done a few videos on Dreamcast emulators and Redream just keeps getting better and better. Raycast used to be the emulator to go to, but since Redream came out, Raycast has kind of been left in the dust. For those of you who are comfortable with RetroArch, RetroArch has a great Dreamcast core called Flycast. It's highly customizable and it works well. But overall, there isn't really an app out there that can beat the presentation and ease of use that Redream offers. This app is free, but there are features hidden behind a paywall. The cost of the app, if you want all of the features, is $5.99, and that purchase is within the app itself. For this video, I'll go over both the paid and the free versions. When you first boot up the app, you'll be greeted with this screen here. It'll say upgrade to premium and continue in light mode. We'll tackle the free version first, so go on ahead and select continue in light mode. If this is your first time using the app, it'll ask you for access to your photos, media, and files on your device. You'll want to say yes. On this next screen, which happens to be the main screen of the app, it'll probably tell you your game library is currently empty. We have to let this emulator know where we keep our games, so go on ahead and click Go to Library. Once you're here, click Add Directory. From here, there are a whole bunch of different directories. If you keep the games on the internal storage of your phone, scroll down to the very bottom where it says Storage Emulated Zero and click on it. From here, you should probably recognize the main file system on your phone, so go on ahead and navigate to where you keep your games. For the purposes of this video, I stuck everything in the Download folder, so I'm going to go ahead and click it. Once you've selected the folder where your games are kept, go on ahead and click Click this blue button here to add that directory to your library. Now your game should automatically populate in this menu, and if they don't, it's for one of four reasons. The first reason is maybe you don't have the games on your phone. The second reason is maybe you specified the wrong directory. The third reason is maybe you have bad game files. And the fourth reason is maybe you haven't unzipped your game yet. And for me, I haven't unzipped any of my games, and that's why they're not showing up. Unfortunately, Redream does not read zip files. If you don't know how to unzip files, I do have a video showing you exactly how to do it. And in that video, I use Dreamcast games as an example, so go on ahead and check the link in the description. Once you've extracted your games, or if they're already extracted, provided you've done everything correctly up to this point, your game should auto-populate on the menu. The box art for these games is automatically downloaded, which is pretty cool. Before we jump into a game here, let's take a look at the menu options. In the Saves menu, you can individually manage your game saves. On the Input menu, this is where you configure the controller and the controller type. By default, it's set to Touchpad. I don't necessarily recommend using a touchpad for Dreamcast games, but if you want to, you can. If you have a Bluetooth controller, this is where you can set it up. So what I'm going to do now is just click on port A. From here I have input device. I changed this if I wanted to switch it to a Bluetooth controller. Device type is a little bit different. In the device type, you can switch it between controller, keyboard, and light gun. For most people, you'll just need a controller. When you click customize touchpad, you can completely customize how the touchpad works on your phone. You can move controls around, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, and if you screw them up, just hit reset controls. As I said before, I don't necessarily recommend using the touchpad to play Dreamcast games. I mean, you can if you want, but it's probably not going to be the best experience. If you have a Bluetooth controller and it's connected, you can switch that input device now by clicking input device. For this video, I've paired my Xbox controller to my phone. When I see input device, I can see Xbox wireless controller right there on the list, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. As soon as I select the controller, a whole bunch of options pop up on the screen. From here, you can configure every single button on the controller, and I'd recommend going through it just to make sure everything is assigned correctly. If you screw anything up, just go on ahead and click reset binds. On a side note as well, as soon as you pair a Bluetooth controller and start using it, it will remove your on-screen controls to make your screen a lot cleaner. Now on the video menu, here are your options. You don't really need to change anything here, but I do recommend turning the frame rate counter on. This will help you monitor the performance of your game. If you're noticing the frame rate is dropping, it might be because your phone is having a hard time running the game. Frame skip is enabled by default and that should hopefully clear up any sort of issues whatsoever. If you notice on this menu, there is no option to increase the resolution. And that's because it's not included with the free version. That part is hidden behind a paywall. From the system menu, you can change the region of your Dreamcast. You can change the language, you can change the broadcast, and you can change the cable. For cable, there are three different options, RGB, VGA, and composite. You can play around here, set it on whatever one you like the best. Now here's what the game looks like using touchscreen controls. In the top left-hand corner of the screen, you can see the frame rate. 
You can also see the D-pad, the joystick, and all of the buttons. Overall, it's incredibly difficult to play with touchscreen controls, but if you can do it, more power to you. If you're wondering what the turbo button does, it speeds up your gameplay. This is great for getting through cutscenes and loading screens, but not necessarily good for trying to play games. Here's what the game looks like when you're using a Bluetooth controller. As you can see, there's no more touchscreen controls. They're automatically taken away. For the paid version of Redream for $5.99, you get the additional game resolution option. This will help you crank the resolution if you want. By default, it's set to 640x480. You can crank this up to 1280x960, 1920x1440, 2560x1920, 3200x2400, and 3840x2880. In addition to increasing the resolution, the paid version gets you multiple save states per game. The paid version also gets you a custom server role in their Discord server. I recommend joining their Discord server whether or not you pay for the app. Their Discord server is great if you're having problems, have a question, or just want to meet people in the community. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Redream is an amazing emulator, but your experience may vary based on the type of phone you have. For this video, I was using a Google Pixel 5. I also used a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and an S10 Plus and had no issues with any of those phones. Mind you, they're all flagship phones. Most people should be absolutely fine with the free version of this app. If you're having issues running games, paying for the full version of this app will not fix those issues. Instead, I'd recommend joining their Discord server where you can ask questions and troubleshoot. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on Redream in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.